Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's have a look at something I call Big Eyes Effect in Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, now there's two parts to this effect. One is the effect and the next is manual tracking. You have to manually track. The effect itself is easy to do. The tracking is a little bit tedious, so you're going to have to have a lot of patience. Let's have a look at what we're going to create first. <laughs> All right, we'll apply that in a second. Just want to let you know that all of the videos in this tutorial were provided by Adobe Stock, the premier supplier of stock images, video, illustrations, 3D objects, and motion graphics templates. Find the perfect asset for your next creative project. And the wonderful music is from my friends over at artlist.io. Links are in the description. Okay, so what have we got here? We've got this effect on his eyes and I have it on an adjustment layer. You don't have to have it on an adjustment layer. I just have it on. Now, when I shut it off, uh, what actually looks odd is his, eye, his eyes look too small for his face, kind of like when Millhouse on The Simpson takes his glasses off. Um, but I've got it on an adjustment layer. Let, let's just do it from scratch. So here's my video. I'll drag it down and make a new video, new timeline. And here he is with his normal eyes. He's got this great expression. Now, I don't want to start at the beginning because his eyes are closed a little bit. So I'm going to move to where they start up being opened right here. I'll make sure the clip is selected. Go to Effects and search for Sphere Eyes. And you'll see it's the Sphere Eyes distortion right there. When you have a clip selected, you don't have to drag and drop. You just have to double click. And the two properties are the radius and the center. The radius is how big that bulge is, and don't put any keyframes on that. That way, after you track it, you can change it for the whole animation. The hard part is manually tracking the center sphere. It's applied right now, you just don't see it. It's actually close to his nose. If we turn it up, right now it's at zero, and as we start to turn that up, we can see this kind of an effect. These two numbers below are the left and right position, and this is the up and down position. So I want this a little bit smaller, just something that grabs each portion of that eye. So right now, if we play this, it's going to stay on that position. It's not going to follow him around. So we need to move that around with him. And we're going to create keyframes to do that. And I'll do that by clicking on this button here on this button here, center of sphere, and we've added a keyframe. And what typically happens is when you apply keyframes like this, they usually become deselected and you don't know where that center point is. If it gets deselected, go back up and select sphere eyes. Let me give myself a little bit more room here. and we'll drag that up. So you can see it's in the middle of his eye. It's very small, and as we move that around, we'll change its position. So the idea here is we set one keyframe at one position. We need to move the playhead ahead and then reposition where that distortion takes place. That's the tricky part. There's two ways to do the moving. One is manual where you grab it, which is easier, and the other way is to change the numbers. Sometimes this little circle is hard to grab, and that's because as you're moving it, you're not just creating a point on a keyframe. If you've ever seen Bezier Handles, this is my uh, puppet show for Bezier Handles, if you click and drag and it's not moving, that's because you've accidentally grabbed the handles. You'll do that a hundred times while you're trying to do this. So you just have to undo and, and redo, or sometimes I just had to go to the numbers. The other thing that makes this um, a little bit easier is if you use the scroll wheel on your mouse and, and you can probably use the trackpad and move ahead. So if you notice here, as I'm moving my scroll wheel ahead, I'm moving the position a little bit further ahead. And you can see that indicated over here. 
as long as I've created one keyframe, when I move the next position, it's going to create another keyframe. So as I move the, oh, see, there's that darn handle. So I'll undo that and try to redo that undo. So I can't, I can't move that correctly. So I'll come over to the numbers and you can click and drag on the numbers. The first one is left and right. The next one is up and down. And you'll see you start to get a million of these little keyframes in here. Well, let's go have a look at, at um, let's go look at, at my example here. Look at how many keyframes are on that eye. Yeah, a lot of keyframes. Okay, let's go back to working on this guy. So everything's deselected. Okay, the next thing we can do is zoom in to a maximum of 400%. This can make things a little easier. So instead of fit, I'm going to jump down to 400%. The problem is you jump to the middle of your clip, not to where the eye is. So now you need to move it. And that's what these very, very dim scroll bars are for. Or you can grab the hand tool and you have to go back to the move tool to move, to move that point. But the hand tool sometimes can be easier. So tap the H key for the hand tool, tap the V key for the move tool. So now there's my move. Now I'm gonna use my scroll wheel, move ahead, use my scroll wheel. And you don't have to do every keyframe. If you want complete 100% accuracy, then one frame at a time is what you need to do it. Oops, undo. And you keep moving this around. Oh, undo. See how easy it is to grab those handles? Move ahead. Undo. And now I'm going to back up. And you'll see as we back up, it follows all that position where we were. Although it kind of is way off there. Oh, yeah, that's because we hadn't set one there yet. And to see this, we've got to go back out to fit. Go back to where our keyframes are, deselect. This is where we don't want that uh, showing. Now when we play, oh, and you see it's that's at the end of the keyframes. And that's really all it is. You just need to do this a lot more times as I've done here and see all of these keyframes. If I make that large, you can see all of the keyframes. And sometimes I didn't have to, to do it um, in some places. And it follows that. And you can see even when he blinks his eyes, it still works. Because the distortion is actually distorting his eyelid too, as if his eye is a large round sphere and the eyelid is coming down. Where this won't work is if you start to turn sideways. Because this effect is a two-dimensional sphere. It's not 3D bulging, moving around in a different perspective. It's only 2D. But if you've got the right footage, it works. Now, let me show you another example. Big eyes change. Okay. So in this example, what I've got happening is I do have keyframes for the radius. So you can see the radius changes for both left and right. Oh, and by the way, once you're finished one eye, you go back to the effect and you drag another sphere eyes in. So you end up with two and I just named mine left eye and you can right click and, and rename that right eye. I guess that's his left eye. Okay. So that you have both of these effects. Now, what I did was I just duplicated the whole um, sequence that I had, but this time I added a radius here of zero. And when it gets to this point, it's going to go back to the larger radius. So have a look what happens. I did it when he blinks. So his eyes are normal here, he'll blink and boom. They just show up. And what I found happen is I had too slow my keyframes, if we zoom in here, when I originally worked on this, the keyframes were further back. Remember, this is for the, the size. And it looked fake. I mean, you might like that look. 
But if you want it to look more like it's an organic effect, boop, it pops right up and now follows his eyes right along. All right, let's go back to the first one now. And remember, because I have this set with no keyframes, I can change the size of that radius. So if we wanted to, we could bring this down, maybe make it, let's try 80. Make them both the same. That's a different look. What if we take them to something even smaller, like 30? And we might not really see that effect. Let me turn that on and off. Yeah, 30 doesn't really do much. It's really just changing his pupils a little bit. So 30 is very little. Ooh, let me get that 68. There we go. All right, so let's go back to what I had before, which was 100 and 100. And the one last thing I wanna show you is the telltale difference that happens with manual tracking. And that's something called slipping. This is the difference between a social media Instagram effect and something that Hollywood would do. In Hollywood, if something slips, you get fired. Um, and on Instagram, and, and when, you're, when you have those automatic glasses and weird faces and stuff, they're using some sort of, of uh, um, technology to help track your face and the tracking is not very accurate at all. It's pretty good and most people are happy with it. But watch near the end in my track here, Right there, you see the eye slip a bit? Right there. And that's because I probably have too many keyframes in this part here. So I've manually made these keyframes, but I probably didn't need them. Right there. So I could probably, oh, I, I actually deleted the other ones, I didn't delete those. Oh, it's still right there. I probably have to tweak that. So the big difference with manual tracking versus something like After Effects where you could track the eye and you could do this all with automation, um, in, in any time you're doing manual tracking, you'll get that little slipping in there. But you know what? I think most people that are used to these Instagram kind of effects are probably happy with this. And remember the first time I showed this to you, it looked pretty good, didn't it? Once you start digging in, you might see some errors in it. But if this was something that just came up and you looked at it and then you move on, you don't have time to go in and take it apart. I think it's a pretty cool effect with something as simple as a, a, an old sphere eyes effect that's been in Premiere Pro for a long time. All right. Hey, if you found this informative and this is your first time on uh, Video Reveal, take a moment and subscribe. We really do appreciate it. If you want to support us more, you can do that through PayPal. Uh, there's a link in the description and one in the front of the channel. We do appreciate all of our wonderful, amazing PayPal supporters. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to listen to all of these suggestions that I get out there about how to create this effect, that effect, and then I'll figure out easy ways to do them for you.